What is up guys, my name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to install CineDesigner R3 and get some of the assets into your Cinema 4D to get everything started. So to start, you're gonna to go to the website and buy the actual plugin and the subscription and that should give you access to all of these lovely assets here to download. You're gonna to wanna to go to one of them or a lot of them or all of them if you want to. Uh, I'm not logged in, so it says this is only purchase purchasable by members, but you'll be able to um, add it to your cart, buy it, which will be free, and then you'll get the links and everything to download them and then you're going to want to put them all on your desktop or something like that. So the first thing you want to do when you buy Cine Designer is download the actual plugin. And now in R3, the plugin is going to be completely separate from the assets in the 3D models. Before in R2 and R1, they were all together, which actually made release problems for me and made it harder to update. But now the plugin completely separate. Uh, you get that as soon as you buy it. And this is the plugin right here, Cine Designer R3 B1. It's kind of unlikely I'm going to update that anytime soon, but if you're part of the subscription plan, when you buy it, you get the updates to the actual plugin for a year, for a year too. So you want to unzip this and you're going to get this uh, folder here with a Cine Designer folder. And this folder here, this one, is the actual plugin. So to install the plugin, it's pretty easy. You're going to want to open Cinema 4D. You want to go to Edit, Preferences. On my computer, for some reason, this takes a second. I can't imagine why, but it does. And then you're going to want to go down here and it says open preferences folder. So you don't have to go through digging through the OS and whatnot. It gives you a link to it. I think that's really smart. You're going to want to go to uh, plugins and then drag in Cine Designer there. And that will install Cine Designer for you. I'll close that. And once you have it installed, you should get something here that says plugins. Cine Designer, I have a lot of things in there. You will only have one or two things. Uh, and we got rid of things like this. This doesn't exist anymore, and I'm gonna show you why. There's a, there's a better, more visual way of doing it, but these are stuff that I have that you won't have. But if it's installed, you will get something that says Cine Designer in there. So next, you're gonna download a lot of zip files. And I would suggest just downloading the ones you need to start, and then kind of shop through the catalog and database as you need them. I can't stop you from just downloading everything, but I feel like most people don't need everything. And then if you download too much and you don't know what it does, then you kind of forget it's there. Versus downloading the one by one per project and finding them and building your own little custom database, we're gonna find out. I think that's a better way. It's the way I like to work now. So download a bunch of stuff. I have a camera, a tripod head, a Fisher dolly, a stand, and a light. And you're gonna unzip them all. And when you unzip them, there's going to be a picture a JPEG most likely, and a C4D file. So what you want to do, for instance, and with this red camera, you want to double click it and open it from the folder. You don't want to merge it, just open it directly in it. And what you're going to see here is the camera, the thing that you downloaded. And what you want to do now is install it into your content browser. So you get to the content browser two ways, and we're going to make a third. One is content browser here. And we'll see it's just a like a file system, right? And it's a place to put your assets. And the other way to do this is to go here. And I actually don't like either of those because they're too slow. And you'll see with R3, the way that I've designed it, you're going to be in the content browser 24-7. That's how you get everything from the cameras, the rigs, to the set pieces, to the people. Everything is in the content browser. So what I suggest doing is this now to set this up. We're going to go to Customize Commands. And you're going to write Content... Uh-oh content browser, and it's here. So you're gonna click this, and I would click here and make the shortcut B, because B is basically a bridge if you use the native shortcuts, and you shouldn't be using bridge, not in this context, and there's other shortcuts for it. Uh, I feel like most people are not gonna be using bridge. So overwrite the shortcut with B, or if you're an advanced user, something you know you're not using, I can pretty much guarantee you're not gonna be using B if you're brand new to Cinema 4D. So make it B, and then you're going to be able to hit B and bring up the content browser. I think that's a really great way of working. I forget if you have to save that anywhere. Do I have to save this? Is there like save keyboard layout? Oh yeah, save as startup layout, maybe not. I don't know if you have to save the custom commands or not, but I think that should save it um, just like that. So now that we have B bound to the content browser, very fast to get in there and do what you need to do. And we're gonna set that up in a second. The last thing I want you to do is go to window, back to customization, and you're gonna to wanna to do customize palettes. You're not gonna to have to do this really ever again, just in the beginning, and then you can forget all about this. You're gonna to wanna to write CD, and you want the CD rig. So you're gonna drag this up here, like that, 
and then close it. And now what you're gonna need to do is go to um, Window, Customization, again, this is the last time, do Save as Startup Layout. I'm not gonna actually do that because I have a different one, but save that. And now you're gonna always have the CD Rig button there. You can hit B and that comes up. So now what we're gonna do is install the RED camera. That's what we came here for. We're gonna hit B again. And I have a whole bunch of stuff that you probably will not have unless you've been doing this for a while and you have Set Designer, etc. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take, uh, you're gonna make a new preset folder. Is that what it's called? So file, new preset library. And I would suggest calling it CD uh, R3 physical. You can call it whatever you want, but that's what I suggest calling it. And now you have an empty folder. You'll see that I have a whole bunch of other stuff um, in there from set designer, all sorts of things. But here we have a fresh one here and I actually have to go install all of my new assets because I'm just releasing R3 with everything that got completely updated. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab, make sure it's the top one for the red camera, Top, grab the top um, asset here and drag it in. And now this is gonna load up and now you have this installed locally. And the last thing you wanna do is take this and you wanna right click it and do set preview. And you wanna go back to your desktop, find the red camera. Where is the red camera? And you wanna click on the JPEG. And now you have a nice looking picture of the camera. So now I can start again, I can close this, I can hit B, double click, and there's my camera. So. Uh, like you're gonna need to do this for everything. It takes a few minutes, but I think it'll actually help you understand and remember like what you have. So let's do a couple more and I'll do the rest off screen. So let's add the O'Connor, double click. We're opening it, we're gonna hit B and we're gonna drag it in. So now we have our O'Connor installed. We want to set preview and I want to go to the O'Connor and we're gonna set the preview. Uh, make sure that when you close this, you don't change anything about it. I mean, it doesn't, really matter, but I would say don't don't change anything as you're doing this. And let's add a fissure in as well. We're gonna open the fissure, hit B, and drag it in. Pretty cool. So I'm just gonna change the preview for this one. Go back here, or is it fissure? Like that, and make sure you're doing the right one because otherwise you'll get pretty confused. So um, this is how we're using uh, the content browser, we're not using any of the builder dialogues if you came from R1 or R2. Those were cool, but the systems I build out now are a little bit more complicated and I actually like being able to see everything all at once. I think that's really nice, especially as this year I'm gonna be adding a lot more. We're working with the manufacturers, a couple other things are in development as well. We're gonna be adding a lot of stuff basically and it was too cumbersome to use the builders. This is a very visual way. So uh, to recap, you're going to want to install the plugin putting that in the folder I showed you, and then you wanna download all of these, open them all up, and then put them in your content browser. If you want to, you can uh, bind it to B. I think that's a really smart. And then you wanna also, for the next episode, I'll show you how this works. You're gonna to wanna to add this here, because that makes the CD rig object, which we will cover in the next episode. Uh, keep watching this series if you're brand new to Cinema 4D, if you're brand new to Cine Designer R3, you're just getting into it. And even if you're an R1 or R2 user and you're have upgraded or thinking of upgrading, uh, definitely watch this whole series through. This is like the getting started with Cine Designer for 2017, even though it's almost 2018. And then I'll, maybe I'll just call this for 2018. Um, see what's new, see how the workflow works and see if you wanna upgrade to it. So until next time, I will see you on the next episode.